Good day, fellas. Welcome to Uncensored Advice for Men. First of all, love you guys. Thanks for listening in. And now we are on YouTube. So we just put a few hundred interviews out there. So you could watch it on YouTube, Uncensored Advice for Men. Now, you may not be able to find it because we're a uh, an uncensored show, so you have to type it in specifically. We're also on all the major podcasting platforms. This show is for you guys out there who want tough advice, who want clear shooters, who don't want a um, censored. You don't want to be censored. You want to hear the information and take it for yourself. So with that, um, we went into the marketplace and um, into the world and with other PR firms and looking for looking for a female coach who teaches men how to date, how to have sex, how to have conversations. So with that, Celeste, welcome to Uncensored Advice for Men. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I'm looking at your website. It says the one thing missing from your dating game, dot, dot, dot. What is that? Yes. Uh, usually it is the confidence to approach women, uh, to be able to speak to them and uh, just not knowing what to say, how to act. And so I basically teach men how to build that confidence through their image, through their um we coach them on what's not comfortable for them and we get them ready for the dating game so that they're successful and whatever that looks like. It might not be a partner or a marriage. It might be just having multiple dates. So we just get them ready so that they're comfortable. Got it. And from a woman's perspective, so like I've interviewed pickup artists, you know, guys, and they're like, this is how to increase your game, right? You, It's a numbers game and you got to me measure your metrics and helpful information. But what I would love to hear from a female's perspective is, all right, so we've heard it from the guys of how to pick up girls or how to date, right? What about from a woman's perspective? Why don't you give us an, an idea of what you, you do on a day-to-day -day basis? And uh, let's start talking to our dudes. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm just going to start off with, you know, Joe Schmo. I don't know who it is, but he comes to me and he's like, look, I haven't got any dates. I keep swiping right. And nobody's, you know, nobody's connecting who I want to connect with. So we kind of sit down with them and we get really real. We talk about what his goals are. Um, and we basically break that down. And so where I start with is we really start off with like how he's presenting himself online. You know, what is he wearing? What are his pictures saying? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, don't hold up a dead fish. Women don't like it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny, right? Cause we push stuff and we're like, I'm a man. I'm going to put a bloody dead animal. Like, I mean, exactly. Girls might not like that. Interesting. I believe I have not met one woman who, who enjoys a dead animal on uh, a profile pic yet. So uh, just note that. Um, also, yeah, we don't want bathroom pictures of a guy, you know, lifting up a wife beater and showing off his abs, you know, like taking down his pants a little bit. We don't, we don't want anything like that. Just show us who you really are, be authentic, have good lighting, um, but give us, give us a smile, give us a, a dog pic if that's what you're into or some, some, kind, some kind of adventure maybe you went on with your friends uh, if you travel or just a little bit about you. Um, keep your bio short and sweet. You know, we don't want to hear any negative talk. <laughs> that's such a turn off. Um, you know, so we just really go over these really... I don't want to say simple, but you know, what are you, how are you projecting yourself? Women want to see that you care about yourself, that you're taking care of yourself in some shape or form. Um, and that you really, at, at some point when we start dating, we really want you to listen to us. So I really teach men how to look at it from a female perspective because look i know dudes and bros you get together and you think this is like yeah let's go do this let's go do that but we we can see through it unless you're an f boy and then you know i'm sorry but there are a lot of those out there um so we just kind of go over your goals we um go over your dating profile we pick out i teach color psychology uh what power colors are for you how to use those when it comes to dating, how to use those 
you know, when it comes to an interview, so on and so forth. And color is like the first thing that we notice, forget about everything else. So it already sends a message without you even knowing. No so kidding. yeah, it's yeah. pretty crazy. All right. So let's talk about, so as an image consultant and you're helping mm -hmm. guys with their dating profiles and, and their, their appearance, how, how are they appearance? How are they showing up to, to attract the right kind of person that they want? Right. That's, that's your job. Right. That's what you exactly. do. And there's, there's certain colors, the psychology of colors that as a guy and, and my brother-in-law, <laughs> he's colorblind, right? Like, so he would have no clue, but for, for me, I would have no clue about this. Like what, what are some of the ideas on the color psychology that guys need to know about? So everybody has, everybody can wear any color on the color spectrum. There's just different shades that work best for you based on your eye color, your skin undertone, your hair color. So basically without doing anything else, it just automatically brings attention to your eyes. And when we're dating, you want to hear what the other person is saying, right? You don't want to be distracted. And so color is just one thing to take away distraction or the opposite, mm. um, being able to focus on your eyes. And if you don't know your proper colors and what that means, it's kind of uh, an in-depth thing. You can just go with your eye color. It's great. Like wear a shirt. If you got blue eyes, green eyes, you know, brown eyes, just wear some warm tones just to kind of set the mood where you're not like, okay, what do I wear? <laughs> this is crazy. Um, but red, just so you know, red's the most powerful color. Really? It, Good if you bad. look at, yeah, uh, no, it's, it can be seductive, but it also can be very overwhelming. So if you're in a full piece red suit, it could be a little alarming for a first date. <laughs> yeah. Could come off too strong. Um, blue, just, this is a great one for all you guys. It's the most trusting color. Okay. If you look at all the banks, they've got blue in their colors usually. So these are just a couple I um, little tidbits that they can take away yeah. and use, use what you will. Um, be authentic with who you are. So if you're a little crazy, a little wild, I mean, it's okay to, to showcase that, but just keep it down a little, a little bit of a notch just so that you guys can actually get to know each other. All right. And you, you mentioned like, this may not apply for F boys. You meaning like guys who are just going out and trying to hook up and put more notches on their belt. Is that what you're exactly, referring to? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So F boys, I'm sure everybody knows it's when I grew up, it was called the player. So it's pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, guys that just want to hook up with as many girls as they want. And they're really smooth and they're really good at their talk and they're, they get to the emotion side of a woman before you know, that they know how to work the emotion side and then they hook up and then bye. Yeah. And then peace. See you later. Yes. Um, so this is, this is interesting. And this, so that when you see that, will you, you know, like an F boy comes to you and they, they want to increase their dating game or, you know, like get more notches on their belt. Is that something right. that you help with? Or you're, you're more focused on guys who want, you know, healthy relationships or whatever. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm not into uh, seeing clients as, you know, F boys is for clients. It's just not my, it's not my thing. I don't yeah. really think they would come to me anyway, just to be honest. I feel yeah. like they're like, I've got, I've got this, the dating game's easy for me. Yeah. Um, the people that come to me are either men that have been married for a long time and they're like, whoa, how do I date? Like, what is this about? Um, and, or many, a guy that's been married to his job. A uh, surgeon, just for example, and one of my clients who has been in the hospital for 20 years. So they're just uncomfortable. They don't know how to talk. They don't, they get very awkward when it comes to the dating side of things. Sure. So yeah. I've, I've been married 13 years. So I've been out of the air quote game for a long time. I've got to step up my game, even, you know, to be there for my wife and to to date her and such, but let's, 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 let's talk to the guys out there who are recently divorced. Okay. Right. And they're going, I need to get back in the game because I'm, I'm lonely, but mm -hmm. I forgot what it was like. Like, it's not like in high school or early college where you're going to all these frat parties, you're hanging out and you meet someone at the bar and you're like, Oh, cool. Hey, we could establish a relationship. Things change as we get older. Right. Definitely. So for, for a guy who comes to you and says, listen, recently divorced, I'd like to meet someone. I'm not out there just to go get notches on my belt. Like I truly want to meet, you know, some women. 
and get to know them. And maybe if it turns into a long-term relationship, that's cool, but mm -hmm. I need that, but yeah. I have no confidence. What, yeah. how do you start to help those guys? So I, I know this is uh, first and foremost with someone that's been recently divorced. I really kind of coach them in the beginning and see like kind of what went wrong with that. And maybe so that we don't repeat anything in the next relationship. Like what? Uh, yeah. So maybe obviously it's, I, I don't want to say it's 50, 50, but you know, there's two people in the relationship and what happened, what kind of went wrong. And so were you just working nonstop? Were you emotionally unavailable? Were you, you know, not attracted and having sex with your wife? You know, like what were some of the issues? So, and I don't get too personal unless they really want to, but I kind of want to see where we need to go forward because if I just get his wardrobe looking great, right? Get his new threads, like get him all like confident and, and tell him where to go and what to do you know, if he's going to repeat the same things that happened to his, in his last marriage, it didn't go well, then I'm doing him a disservice. So on that note, that's a little side note. <laughs> so say he is ready. He's kind of worked on some of those things that he needs to work on. Um, I really prefer to work with matchmakers, but if he wants to do the online dating, then we set up that profile for him. Depending on his goals, we, you know, make the bio, we write the bio, get the right pictures for him. Um, but I honestly, with online dating, the one thing that really bothers me or yeah. what has transpired is the lack of in real life when people actually meet. Um, they're not meeting enough. And so this is another reason why people are awkward. It's another pe a reason why people are um, coming to me because they feel like, well, I'm just swiping, right? But there's no other interaction. There's no, like, maybe there's a few messages, but they fall off. So how do I meet that person? So I really try to figure out what their lifestyle is, where they live, kind of friends, maybe hobbies, or maybe things that they want to learn to do. And so we try to get them in environments where they're meeting a lot of people because it is somewhat of a numbers game, right? Yeah. You know, it is like um, getting them around the right people that they want to meet too. That's really big. Yeah. And maybe they don't know what that is. So we help them figure it out. <laughs> I mean, it's true, right? Like if you, let's just say you've been married. I know a guy who was married for, you know, 30 years mm -hmm. and then they, they, you know, he misbehaved and they wound up divorced, but like he has to rediscover what do I want? He has to re rediscover who he is. Right. Exactly. So like, a part of that is a challenge. And I think a lot of times, like if you don't practice something, if you're not constantly doing it, you, your skills will drop. It's proven. Mm -hmm. So even being able to talk to someone or approach someone or have a conversation, I think it's super helpful. So, cause a lot of guys will never have a conversation with a, a female, right? Like mm -hmm. who's not their wife or whatever, but now divorced, they're like, I forgot how to do it, blah, 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 <laughs> right? So, so do you do like when you're, you, you create the app and, but you, you're like, we really need to focus on in-person stuff. Do you have conversations mm -hmm. with guys to kind of help them? I talk? do. <laughs> I do. Yes. Well, I do coaching with them and I get them co very comfortable with talking to another female, but yes, uh, I also do mock dates with them. Oh, cool. Tell us and what mock a mock dates date are, is. Yeah. So a mock date is. We, it depends on the package, whether we do this once or twice, but usually in the beginning, we always do this and I kind of see where they're at in their dating game. So they, they plan everything just like they were planning a normal date and I show up and we do everything that he would do on a date and mother well, strength center, some kind of adventure. And I kind of evaluate him and see where maybe he's depending on his goals, where things he's falling short on, where he could use some help. So I'm kind of a wing woman in that sense. Um, but I don't actually go out with them when they're trying to pick up girls. So it's a little bit different situation. Yeah. And then I sit back and, you know, look, maybe this is something you like, we just really get real and say X, Y, Z, this is what we need to do. 
And then if they want to do another one at the end, after we've done the coaching and we've gotten them all set, uh, we could do that as well. So I think that would be super helpful, you know, for, for a guy to, you know, practice, but also like boost his confidence, right? For a guy who's been, you know, married to his job, every time he goes out, people see him alone or with buddies, but like going out, seeing him with an attractive lady and, and having conversations with people, but you know, like I'm sure other women are going, <laughs> Who, who's that? Right. You know, like, cause that women pay attention to other women. Am I right? Yes. I'm making yes. assumptions. I'm not a fan. No, they do. They really okay. do. They're they kind of like, what? what's going yeah. on? So, all right. So they go on this guy, we'll call him Frank. Okay. I don't know. I don't think I know any Franks who are divorced and okay. So this won't apply either. directly to, but Frank, you, you go on a mock date with him. Mm -hmm. He plans it out. What kind of, and then you're, you're taking notes, right? Like in your, your head, and then you provide constructive criticism at the end, some feedback, good and bad. What are some good things that you see on that first initial mock date? And what are some things where you're like, you should probably have done this. What are some <laughs> things that typically come up? Let's see. Ooh. <laughs> um, I had a gentleman who ate really, really fast, like just went through the motions. Um, didn't stop to like talk. It was just like, it was almost like he was just like at a trough and just, just <laughs> eating and eating. And I was like, Whoa, yeah. slow down. Like you're, you're, you're here to like eat obviously, but you're here to get to know somebody. Um, and I guess that's what he did with his wife. All they did, if they went out, it was just shove your mouth full of food and then leave. And I was just like, wow. You know, so getting them out of some of those old habits, um, Another thing I really always teach these guys is like chivalry. I, I really don't care how much money you make. If she makes more, if she's more successful, it doesn't mean you shouldn't be a gentleman. And so stand up if she needs to, to leave, to go to the restroom, you know, um, put open the door for her, pull the chair out. If the waiter doesn't do that, do all these things and then really listen. So I had guys, like I said, who don't listen or they talk too much, it should be 20% talking and 80% listening. And trust me, she will notice. That so. is hard, especially if you're nervous. Yes. I'm a nervous laugh. You know, like when I get nervous, I'll talk too much or I laugh and, I, and then I start saying dumb <laughs> jokes and I'm like, oh, just shut up, Josh. And I know that's <laughs> how a lot of guys are out there. Mm -hmm. um, what are some things that we can do to actively listen, to practice being a good listener? And I think that the yeah. ratio is good because we're doers. So we're like, okay, give us a rule. 20, done. How do we do that? Ask interesting questions. Okay. That way it, you, you're still talking and you're still engaging but you're not feeling that awkward pause. Mm -hmm. If you ask her, you know, what are you passionate about right now? Like who are some of the biggest people in your life that made an impression on you? I mean, just like kind of a little bit more deeper questions. And I don't mean like, I don't look, I don't want you talking about baggage exes. If you have children, it's great, but don't talk about them. You're just getting to know if this person vibes, if you guys match in any shape or form, yeah. And so asking some of these questions, of, oh, what do you do? You know, ask something a little bit more exciting and yeah. she talks about it. Right. And you're listening. So this mm. is like great. <laughs> this is just like a great way. I, you know, <laughs> you know, it's funny. You said, don't talk about baggage. Don't talk about kids. They kind of go like hand in hand. Why not? Yeah. Why, why? So we're, um, you know, you're, Frank and, and you're going out to dinner and he goes, mm -hmm. yeah, I got divorced and I got my kids. And you know, like what's, what's going through your mind when Frank's talking like that? So for me, that is immediate red flags of negativity. And that is a turnoff. Mm -hmm. If I want to see you third, fourth, fifth date or whatever, obviously I'm going to get to know more about you. Right. I'm interested, but dating in the beginning should be fun. And I think so many people put expectations on, does he like me? Is he going to like me? Or is she going to like me? You know, and it's like, just go enjoy your dinner or your adventure and have a good time. Mm -hmm. 
and take the stress off, the expectations off. And when people come in a little bit more lighthearted and a little bit like, this is just a fun time. And I don't mean a fun time, like let's go home after this and let's have sex, but meaning take off that heavy burden of whether or not someone's going to be into you. Yeah. And it's okay if they're not, it's okay if they're not, there's no chemistry, right? It doesn't mean that it was a total flop or a waste you of your have time. Fun. Yeah. You can right? still have a good time. Still have a connection with somebody. Right. And I think connection is, is super cool, especially if you're getting back in the game and I don't want to just call it the game, but like you're getting right. back into a, a relationship, like mm -hmm. where you're trying to meet people. I think a lot of guys go into this with the end in mind. Am I, are we, are we going to like each other? Are we going to get married? Are we going to go have sex? Are we going to like all these freaking questions? So when they're having that first date, a lot of guys want to skip the, around the bases real quick and like figure mm -hmm. out like, how do I get her to like me so we could go whatever, right? Right. How do you coach guys onto maybe releasing some of those expectations and enjoying that actual moment? Well, one of the biggest suggestions I say before first date is to masturbate. Oh, that's a good tip. Yeah. Um, now, a lot of guys might fall asleep after that, but. <laughs> oh, I hope not. <laughs> not me, I no. hope it relaxes you just a little bit. <laughs> awesome. All right. So tip number one. Hey, guys, yeah. when you go out, you might need to, you know, clean out the pipes for a little bit. Why so, Celeste? Okay. Because usually if you're meeting someone, there's some attraction at some, some shape or form, whether you saw her picture or you've spoken to her. Yeah. Um, and I think it also just like takes away like all you're thinking about a sex and maybe you still are, but at least you're hearing a little bit more of what she's saying. If you're a little bit less, <laughs> yeah. if the blood stays north of the waist belt, if, if the blood's up in the brain, you're going to listen better. All right. Be clear yeah. about that. We're, we understand. Got it. So right. now when you, when you talk that way to guys, right, mm -hmm. you, I'm sure that there's guys who come to you that are super straight laced. They got, you know, maybe even pocket protectors and glasses or whatever. And they're going, and you, I want to go on some dates and you go, okay, cool. Before you got on a date, masturbate. Like, how do guys respond to that? Like when you talk like that straight yeah. and bluntly, like, I think yeah. that's great. And guys need to hear yeah. stuff like this. Yeah. How do they respond? I think I just attract that type of client. I lived in New York for 10 years. Uh, I feel very comfortable speaking to men. I've had men clients for the last 15 years. And I don't know, I deal and speak and relate to them a little bit easier. So I think they're usually okay with it. I mean, maybe they might be a little shocked at first, but then once they get to know me, they're like, okay, this is cool. Yeah, oh, she's right. being straight shooter. Yeah. And she gave me so, permission. All right. So now yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so then they, all right, so let's go back to the mock date. So okay. Frank, before the date, you're like, Hey Frank, why don't you go, you know, take a few minutes and go do some self, you know, self care. Self -care. And <laughs> <laughs> that's what we call it in the healthy world. Right. I love but, it. Uh, now they, you know, he, he picks you up, opens the door and you're like, okay, you know, we want you to be, you know, chivalrous. This is date number two. After some, some coaching, he mm -hmm. opens a door. Let's not talk about baggage. Let's not bring any negativity. Let's reduce expectations on outcomes and let's enjoy. What are some other things? Like we're on date number two now, okay. right? What does Frank need to be focusing on kind of date number two in that second date where maybe it went well, maybe just got. You know, blind lucky got lucky the first time in terms of date two's happening. What okay. does date two look like? I think so. Just let me back up one second on that. I think sure. first date should usually be something adventurous. Okay. Um, don't do traditional. Go do something fun. Go kayak. Go hike. Or, I don't know. Do some kind of physical activity usually or choose something that maybe you wanted to do that you haven't tried because i it takes you also out of that weird comfort zone yeah. i usually like two and three to be a, a dinner date okay um so date one went well you have good connection something enough that you want to go on a second date i would just make sure what questions did you ask on the first date leave some different questions for the second date you know, getting to know, I, this is where uh, finding the right partner, if you have similar values and life goals, you're a good match. It does not mean you have to have the same hobbies, the same interests, or the same friends. 
when you have basic values and goals that are similar, then everything else will work itself out. So getting to know those person, getting to know her a little bit um, on whether or not, she, you know, children were, a, you know, a factor in that previous relationship, or maybe she wants kids, maybe she's younger, maybe he's a little bit older. Um, but if their life goals, if she's like, I'm just starting out and he's like, I'm retiring, not a good match. Even mm -hmm. if he's like, I want to date someone 20 years younger because <laughs> she's hot. Yeah. It's not going to work out at the end. If it does, it's so rare. I mean, I'm not saying that it's not possible. Yeah. Aligned values and aligned goals. Is yes. The, the, it, it might mean that you have di different friend circles or this or that, but we have similar goals. That's exactly uh, different or uh, similar values. All right. So date number one. Hey, guys, take care of yourself prior to this. Reduce the expectation of, you know, rounding the bases. Mm -hmm. That way you both are focusing on the moment, not, you know, the sheets. Uh, do something adventurous the first date. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm taking, you know, notes for Frank, right? Uh, yes. Dinner, you know, second and third dinner dates, right? Like then that's when you start to go deeper. Let me ask this question. This is kind of like a softball pitch because I think I know the answer, but I want to. So guys okay. who are like, all right, I, I, I researched the questions to ask her. You know, like, what are you excited about? What are you passionate about? Don't ask negative stuff, right? Uh -huh. But I don't have a good memory. Should I write this crap up down on my phone and, you know, like, <laughs> look at my phone and ask her these questions? What, what about, where does the phone play? And what if guys need, you know, maybe a little bit of inspiration during the thing because they're stuck? What are your I thoughts? I got it. Ah, oh, it's a great question, actually. Thank you. So a phone should not be on the table or in your hand. Go to the restroom if you're having... If you need to write something down in your phone really quick, like, oh, excuse me, I'll be right back. Uh, if you need to look up something and some of my packages I offer, you can come to the bathroom and text me. Oh, cool. So no sending I need, pics. I need no. help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she asked me this. What do I say? Yeah. Uh, Cause it's going so well. Yeah. So, and you know, I know that we all have like some of us, I have a child. So it's like, okay, just take that moment and just, excuse yourself. It just makes things look like you're really, you really like her. You're really into her. You're really paying attention. Yeah. I mean, we all know we get on phones so fast and so easy these days and, yeah. you know, just take, take that 30 minutes, whatever it is and just be off your phone. Yeah. It it's an addiction. And, but mm -hmm. I tell you, like, if you're, if you're with someone and they're at, on their phone, you're just like, they're not interested in me. Yeah. It's exactly what it says. Distracted in something else. Mm -hmm. And yes, I have three kids, right? So like, I, I want to be there for them, but I could also put the phone under my leg and say, if you need me, call me. Right. right. Okay, cool. Yeah. So second or third date or whatever the, 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 the uh, rhythm is of the yes. conversation. Yes. The guy's like, how do I know when to go in for a kiss? I want to go mm, to, I want to go to first question. base. Right. Also a very good question. Thank you. So obviously I recommend probably not in the restaurant going for it <laughs> floss your teeth maybe prior to it too, yeah. right <laughs> oh my god please prior to this date shower shave or trim your beard because if you really want to go in for a kiss be prepared make sure yeah, yeah. make sure that you're <laughs> you brush your teeth <laughs> i know i have to say this but it's crazy what you didn't put clean clothes on <laughs> yeah. you know what's going on so um yes i recommend kissing pretty early Really? I do. I wouldn't, it, you don't have to on the first date that that could be a little awkward, but if it's there, if you're both feeling it, um, I would definitely try it out because long story, long time ago, I was flirting with a guy for months and months. We both were attracted to each other. I would say like three months later, we weren't really in uh, a situation. We were always seeing each other, but we kissed and I was like, hmm. There's nothing there. And he's like, yeah, me neither. I was like, Ooh, okay. Solves that problem. Solves that problem. Um, yeah. So I guess, I guess my whole thing is, um, I think it's okay. And the way that you know, when to go in for the kiss is, is she really looking in your eyes? Is she laughing at your jokes or smiling? Is she flipping her hair, which is another sign of flirt flirtatious. Okay. Um, if her body language is directly facing you, okay. her leg is not crossed towards the door. That means she wants to run. 
Ah. If your foot is body towards language. the door, body right. language. This is something I teach as well. Yes. Um, if you're if you're saying yes and your body is literally closed off, you, it's body language. You really have to look at her body language. And then I'm not saying if she says no, that means yes, guys. <laughs> I mean, if she's maybe a little embarrassed, maybe she's afraid to hurt your feelings. So just pay attention to her body language. Yeah. So I think that 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 first step is is so nerve wracking. The guy's excited and. Uh, you know, he was already nervous about asking her on a date and they, mm -hmm. they went on a date and you're like, you know, I want to encourage you to kiss earlier on. They're like, holy moly, the anxiety I could, I could just hear Frank with the, you know, his, the, the, the things going through his head is like, what if she rejects me? Mm -hmm. Then it's going to be weird. Like, how do I know, am I supposed to ask her, Hey, do you mind if I kiss you yeah. tonight? Or how do you approach that? Yes. I always recommend it's always good to ask, do you mind if I give you a kiss? I would like to kiss you. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, there's very like subtle ways without being really awkward. And if yeah. you're in that moment and if you feel like, okay, you're walking her to her car or whatever the situation is, and she's looking at you, she's waiting, she's stalling a little bit, you know, and, and you could feel there's that chemistry and maybe he feels it and she does it, but that's a good, that's to ask her is always like, the true sign to say, okay. <laughs> and if she says no, how do you respond? So, yeah. Hey, do you mind yeah. if I go in for a kiss? And she's like, nope. And you're like, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> hopefully she has a, a reason behind it. Either yeah. I'm not feeling this. It was great having a wonderful date with you, but I'm just you know, not looking for anything further. Or she says, I'm just not ready yet. You know, it could be. Yeah. So, what guy, what should guy so guy frank goes in for a kiss yes she says no mm -hmm. how should he respond because frank's gonna feel defensive right off the bat he's gonna be embarrassed he's gonna you know there's that's a shock that's yeah. that's a rejection how do you how does frank overcome that or how does he respond <sighs> yeah that's a, that's a tough one. one right that's a tough one yeah, because I get it. Nobody wants to be rejected. Nobody wants to feel that they're not attractive and or desirable. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, I teach them not to take it so personally because who knows like what's going on with that person. Like I said, it could not be the attraction there that she's looking for, but I'm just hoping there's a little bit of an explanation. Yeah. And it's not like, you know, if she doesn't give it to you, I wouldn't say, well, why? Cause that's just like, <laughs> yeah, don't push. let it go dude. just let it go. <laughs> yeah. Maybe date number three, right? Maybe um, date number three. And if not, then, you know, I feel like if date number three, there isn't some type of kiss, some type of physical contact, then I think you reevaluate. So when you're on, when Frank's on date number one or mm -hmm. two, is it okay for Frank to be on date number two or one with someone else as well? Oh, okay. That's a good one. Um, he, do you mean like actively dating? Yeah. So he's or, just trying to meet people and you're coaching right. him on how to, he just got divorced. And he's like, I don't know if I'm ready for a long, you know, term commitment, but I do want to meet some people. Like what's, what's, what's kind. Totally, what's, yeah. yeah. It's totally fine. Okay. Um, you haven't committed to anybody at this point. It's too early. Yeah. If the two people get together and they said, okay, we really like each other. Let's, you know, let's date each other for a while. Let's take our profiles down. So I've had lots of guys who don't do that, you know, and they're still online they're still swiping and you can see that they're on. Yeah. And so that's like a, not a good sign, but yes, go date many people, let them know, like, I'm just getting out here if you truly find that person right away, then you guys decide, make that decision. Yeah. And I like the, the, what you're sharing about, like, just ask, Hey, would it be okay if I kiss you? Right. Mm -hmm. if she says, no, you go, okay. You know, let me know if you ever are right. And then <laughs> right. want to go on another date. Now I know that yeah. this happens. So they say, good night, boom, mm -hmm. date, you know, date number two happens. The first thing he's want to do is want to text, right? And then he's going to text and he doesn't get a respond right off the bat because she's talking with her friends, you know, for, for two hours after the date to give feedback and all that stuff. The, what's the texting regiment 
versus okay. calling versus the that kind of stuff, the communication after the date. So communication after a date should be spoken about before you leave that date. So I'm going to text you in a couple of days, kind of, I think at the end of the date, kind of evaluate where things are. And if you're choosing to go on a third date, then kind of make the plans a little bit before you leave or just say, yeah, I'll, you know, if you're like, oh, I'll just text you when I'm available, like that's just watery, you know, <laughs> or I'm available maybe next weekend. I'll give you a text. If you, t I, th I feel that if you tell them what you're going to do and do it then, mm -hmm. then that's, a, that's like also a good sign, right? That you're responsible, that you really want to see me again, that I can believe what you say. So if you're blowing up her phone a lot, guys, don't do it. It's a red flag. But also don't say I'm going to text you in three days. I don't know. I'm just using like Wednesday. And then you hit her up on Saturday. She's going to be like, Whoop, you missed your, you missed the window, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Well, just it shows, be honest. It shows you know? your, your intent and it shows your, that you're going to follow through that they could depend on you. Right. Exactly. What are some major turnoffs? So they've gone on date number one, date number two. What are some major turnoffs for women? Oh, let's see. Major yeah, turnoffs. Go through a list, man. Like, yeah. have some fun here. <laughs> definitely, um, definitely like being ghosted or uh, not follow through with the date or the text. Uh, let's see. I would say a huge one is being rude to your server or anybody that's at like, it's just ugly, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, entitlement, um, just attitude, I guess. Um, let's see, what's another turn off? <laughs> <There's so many. laughs> I mean, you know, I would say like bad hygiene. I know that maybe it's not as important. Like, well, I think it's not as important. I don't know why, but women are like all over that. Just be like, I'm not saying you have to be a pretty boy or you have to have a certain look, but hygiene is huge. Grooming, groom yourself, take care, like show that you care about yourself. Uh, I think that's a huge one. Okay. It shows that you'll care about her. It shows that you'll care about your relationship. Um, and then also like negativity is just really ugly. I don't care what it is about. We all have things that happen in our lives. It's really how we deal with it moving forward, right? Um, yeah. This isn't a therapy session, by the way, boys. Like when you're, <laughs> I know, right? when you're on a date, <laughs> yes, exactly. don't fall into because they're good listeners. Don't fall into a therapy session. That's yes. for that's for your therapist later on. Was that yes. a good one? Was that good that's advice? That's a great. That's a great one, Josh. Okay. I like that. <laughs> Listen. I've been out of the game for, for a long time. Now I got to remember how to, you know, date my <laughs> wife and I've got two daughters and I got a son. So I got to teach my son how to be a gentleman. So I'm yes. learning this stuff. Um, let me ask this question. All right. So I know that this is important for men and we have an uncensored show. Yes. So, all right. We went for a kiss. She said, mm -hmm. yes. How mm -hmm. do we know when it's, when it's appropriate to, to even explore other physical contact, you know, other stuff, maybe even come back to the place, you mm -hmm. know, the house or whatever. How do you know that it's okay? to do more? Okay. Good question. Um, I believe that where does that kiss go? Right. What is it? Super hot and passionate. So maybe, I don't know. I believe we're all adults at this age and this, like the people that I really help are usually around, I don't know, 38 to 60. I mean, it's pretty raw, a broad range, but we've all kind of been through that young phase of our life, right? Oh, do I wait? Da, da, da. You know, it's this whole game. Is he going to like me if I give it up too soon? That's not the picture here. If you guys want to have sex, go have sex. You're an adult. Just have protected sex, you know, be, be responsible. But, you know, I think it's kind of important if you're both in that, like wanting to explore each other's bodies and see what else that looks like for them. You know, I think yeah. it's healthy. I'm not saying you have to do it right away, but it also doesn't like, there shouldn't be any judgments. Yeah. How do you approach having those conversations? Right? Like, so mm -hmm. see where the kiss goes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when it comes to, I'd like to advance this on and see if there's anything else there. That's a, for Frank, man, that's a major sticking point. And he's like, How I'd like to, does she, and then am I going to get rejected? Um, and, can I, 
can I satisfy her? Can I actually make her happy? So give us some mm -hmm. from the women's perspective okay. on, on healthy sex in a dating relationship. What does that look like? And what is unhealthy physical contact in a, in a dating relationship? So uh, healthy, healthy sex is really, I really want to focus on like whatever she wants. And I know that's like, it sounds really biased, but if, if that happens, if she is ready, if she wants to do this, like try it out see what it looks like for you. She's going to be more comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. Guys, guys get hard ons pretty easy. Women might take a little bit longer to get aroused mm -hmm. and that's okay. That's just like, that's just how it is. So foreplay is really important. You know, foreplay is like, uh, you know, it's like the building blocks to having really great sex and learning, especially since it's new, you're both learning kind of what each other likes mm -hmm. and exploring that. And that's okay. I would just make sure and ask and talk about it, you know, because if you're just like, Hmm, let me do this. Maybe she'll like this. Well, can't you just ask her Yeah. or express your desires or fantasies if it's that's another thing what if the guy's fantasies or desires might be a little uh skewed towards you know the world of porn right so um yeah i would love to hear your thoughts on porn too yeah um what if the guy's fantasies and they're you know date number two and he's talking about yeah <laughs> i'd really like to bring in some animals and some monkeys and <laughs> you know maybe maybe have a six some or something like that like <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit. Uh, I might want to tone it down a little, little Frank, but um, <laughs> yeah. What, what, what is like? What's healthy in, for mm -hmm. for dating until you get to, you know, the Fifty Shades of Grey? Maybe that's date number six, right? Before you start <laughs> yeah. talking about that, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's really important to know people's desires in the sex game, sex world, because you could be like the greatest fit, and you have completely different viewpoints on that. Porn is healthy to a point. I believe that you can bring that in to spice things up. I don't know how much you need that in the beginning, but if she's into it and you're into it, go for it. Um, I like to go to strip clubs. I think that's healthy as well. It's just like a little tease. I feel like, but that happens. I don't know if that happens right away too. If you're really not into somebody, right? If that person's not enticing you in some way because you haven't really learned each other and see, I think that comes a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Could you do it early on? Sure. Okay. But and, I and think there might be. They, they could yeah. ask you though. They're like, hey, this yeah. is the situation. What are your thoughts? Because you're, you have a female's perspective, which is right. going to be a hundred times closer than ours, our perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay. So talk about it, right? So if it's just like, hey, we're getting to that point where we're heading back to the house, you know, we're in an Uber or something like that. And we're like, is that the point to talk about? Like, hey, you know what? You know, what if would you guys be good are, for you? Yeah. If you're going home to the same house, yeah, that's a, that's a definitely okay. I would yeah. make sure though <laughs> nowadays, just, you know, when we're on the same page, right? Like, yep. um, we're not just friend zoning and you know, she thinks we're going to go watch a movie and he's like, Nope, we're getting it on. Right. Yeah. That make sure the, the line aligned motivation, right? <laughs> yes. It, so do you approach that the same way? Do you recommend Frank approaches that the same way as the, the kiss? It's like, hey, just want to make sure that we're on the same page here. Like, are you okay with getting physical tonight or, or mm -hmm. something like that? Is Are those good questions to ask? They're great questions because it gives him permission to proceed. It lets her know where he's at. And if she's like, oh, no, we're just like watching a movie tonight. And she'll be she'll be honest. She'll say what she needs to say. Yeah. She'll say, you know, so he's like, all right, this is not what I expected. Or, you know, I, I just feel like people don't use their voice enough. So I just really like want to put that out there. I mean, yeah, you're having a great makeout session and you think the next is like, I'm going back to the house and we're going to have sex. We're going to, you know, do whatever, just make sure it's like, yeah, we're doing this right. Yeah. <laughs> Does this work for you? It's working for me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I like the, the communication that you teach guys. Guys need coaching in that. That's not mm -hmm. something that I believe that we're naturally gifted towards. I think that's something that we need to grow in and we need to be coached and guided in. So mm -hmm. I like the fact that you're doing this for dudes. Thank you. Um, 
yeah, I got, I got some more questions about, you know, the, you know, being in the world. How do you know, how do you know when there's mutual chemistry? Mm. Because I, I tell you, this is from a guy's perspective and I might be wrong. Okay. Right? So I, I want to be able to say I might be wrong in this from a guy's perspective. If a girl wants sex, if a girl wants a relationship, if a girl wants something, she mm -hmm. could just kind of like wave her hand on the road and it, you know, sex comes easier for women when a guy has to, he feels that, uh, he might have to strive for it, fight for it. It's a numbers thing. It's, you know, like I've got to work for it. I've got to hold doors, pick up things, buy deal, you know, go through this whole process. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Well, if you go back a long time ago when courting was the thing, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Men, when you, t you told me earlier, men want to work for something. They want to feel that they're, mm -hmm. you know, valued in that sense. And so I think this has really obviously changed, but I still think there is a little bit about the, and I would say game, but yep. there is something about the chase, if you will, about men doing things to make her happy. And she's responding warmer. She's getting warmer and warmer. And so when you actually do have that chemistry and it, and it happens and you do have the sex, then it's so much more enjoyable, right? It doesn't have to be a long time, but there is a little bit of a process there. So when guys are like, oh, I got to work for it. I can't just get it, you know, and she can, um, you know, that's not always true either. So it's, it's depending on what your goals are. If you want a relationship, if you're looking to get married or not even just a partner, just having someone to, to, to be in your life together and share things, then this is the way it, it needs to be. Super awesome. On your website. So celestemore.com, right. Mm -hmm. And we'll give guys your contact information. So if they're like, Hey, I need help. I need image consultant. I need to know how to show up on these dating apps, how to have a conversation, maybe even go on a mock date. Like I need this help. Right. So we'll give guys all your contact info, but it says the one date wonder, right? So the guy, man, maybe he's good looking guy shaves. He he's really good at getting date number one, mm -hmm. never gets date number two. What are some of the indications that, uh, or what are some things that he might need to adjust? Why is he not getting date number two? He's either too I uh, he's either too eager. He um, moves way too fast, too, trying to be too smooth surface, um, or he is sending up red flags about, like I said, baggage negativity. He doesn't know what to talk about, so he's talking about, well, I just broke up with this girl and yada yada yada. So it's like that's happening. Uh, maybe he's going on dates with people that aren't aligned with him. Mm -hmm. So he is still swiping with his old values, right? So date number two is happening for multiple reasons. Um, could be he's not listening. It could be you know some some reason. And then we really kind of go over those dates. Like what is happening? What are you saying? How are you presenting yourself? So it's really kind of getting into that, and and then. Being like, okay, well, this is what you want, but this is what you're doing. That's not an alignment. So you've seen the movie Hitch. And, you know, I think the PR group that you, you're working with says, you know, like you kind of look at her as a, a female Hitch, right? The, mm -hmm. the job is help to connect people and, and teach them how to do, you know, this world of dating. And the movie Hitch falls in love, right? So in your situation, you go on these mock dates. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask two questions here. Another one popped up when you're going on these mock dates, have mm -hmm. you ever fallen in love? And you're like, wow, actually like I have feelings for this person Two, Do you have a, like a significant other who is like, you're going on these dates and he's like, your job is ridiculous. Right? Like, <laughs> like what, what, what are your, you know, explain. I, ha that. I have dated, um, I had a significant other while doing this, yeah. uh, they were cool with it. I mean, it was just, it's my job. I think, I think you have to have just the right person, right. Yeah. To be understanding, knowing that this is just, I'm here to help. I'm not here to do anything else. Yeah. Um, sorry, but the first question was, so yes, you, so you, you have okay. to, you have to date the right person to know that this is my career, right? I right, help right. Guys date, right. For sure. Cause if they're jealous, they're going to show Oof. up and you'll be in the middle of a date. That it's crazy. I've right? seen that too. It's a little ugly. So. <laughs> 
question number two. So now you're, you're, you're like, okay, I'm going to teach you how to date. And you're like, mm -hmm. wow, I kind of, I'm kind of into this dude. Right. Has that oh, ever you're saying I'm in. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, that has never happened. I like maybe some, some qualities about them, Yeah. but I don't go in. Um, I, I just, I don't see them like that. It's very professional. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of my clients don't even want to be like on social media, like before and after it's are very quiet about, you know, being discreet. Like I didn't go see a image consultant or a dating coach. I'm just really uh, great at this. True. Yeah. Uh -huh. Have any guys, do you go on the mock date? Have any guys ever like, ha have any guys ever tried too much? And you're like, whoa, 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 this is uh this business here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that has happened as well. <laughs> I can see that. Frank, this is her job, buddy. Come on, man. <laughs> That doesn't mean going for a kiss. No, nope, not yeah. on this date. <laughs> you have to ask and Celeste is going to probably say no. Exactly. Um, got it. So, so for some things that, you know, as taking notes, some, some major turnoffs for women, you know, talking negative, being rude to people, not being a gentleman, mm -hmm. um, not having good hygiene, massive one, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, colors and, and things about like how your appearance looks, shave, take good care of yourself. These mm -hmm. things show. Uh, were there any major ones that I missed out of on the major turnoffs for women? Um, I would just say like to listen more. I, that's a really big one. And I know that guys get nervous, like you said. Um, and they just, but she's probably like, mm -hmm, what? I don't care. And like, she's just going to be off and think about like, when is it going to shut up? And it's not going to go past that. So yeah, I know it's, it's rude. I know for her to say that, but like, this is just, you get like one chance to make a first good impression. Yeah. Unfortunately it is what it is. So make it a good one and no, no pressure there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just have fun. <laughs> have fun. So, cause you already took care of yourself before the date. So, Hey guys, you're, exactly. you're already set for the day at least. Right. All right. So you're on a date and you're, you're coaching guys and you're helping them build their confidence. They go on a mock date with you. And now they feel a little bit more confident of mm -hmm. maybe I'm a prize too. Cause yeah. I think a lot of times guys look at female as they are the prize, which means that I got to lower my expectations. I got to turn off my desires and wants, and I've got to make the self sacrifices because there's, there's a lot of guys who want that. So I got to, do you ever find that where you actually have to say, Hey dude, you're actually a good, you know, good catch yourself. Yes. Yes. I remember I had a client that would not in the beginning would not look at himself in the mirror when we would go like shopping for his, his outfits. He, he would just like, whatever you think. And he wouldn't even look, make eye contact with himself in the mirror. Yeah. Six months later, he actually looked at himself Yeah. and I was cool. like, see, like, yeah, it's really about knowing your worth, knowing you have something to offer this woman as well. Yes. Are th these the things that they want? Yes but you're also adding to her life. And we, believe me, I know so many successful women that are longing for these gentlemen. They're longing for these guys and they're out there. So yeah. just bring your game and you know, know your worth. Yeah. And this is for Frank out there, right? Right. Let me, let me speak to Frank for a second. This was not too long ago. I had a coach tell me to look in the mirror and tell me that I'm proud of myself. I was like, ah, mm. oh, that's so weird. So I look, I was taking a shower and I looked in the mirror and I said, Josh, I'm proud of you. Love you, dude, your, your work. And I was talking to myself. I started mm -hmm. to tear up. A lot of times, you know, guys, we don't get the attaboys and the I'm proud of you. But if you could be proud of yourself, look at yourself in the mirror and be like, yeah, I'm losing some weight. I'm cleaning, you know, I'm clean cut. I'm increasing my threads. I want to encourage you guys to do that, man. Look at yourself and find something that you're proud of and let's build on that. And then as always, if you need help from our guests, reach out to them and say, I need help building my confidence. I need help dating and showing up and building relationships because I'm nervous. Be honest. I'm nervous. I'm terrified of being rejected. You know, maybe you're rejected, you know, your whole marriage or whatever. And that's a, uh, a tough point for you. Mm -hmm. Talk with someone like Celeste about that. Um, Celeste, during this interview, there's probably questions other than where can people connect with you? Cause we'll do that at the end. Yes. There's probably a question about dating mm -hmm. because I don't know that, but I probably should have asked you what yeah. question do you wish I would have asked you? Well, you asked me some good questions, Josh. Um, Ooh, that's a tough one. Okay. 
I think you did a really great job, honestly. Well, You're probably you. the, the best interviewer yet. Yay. Good job, Josh. Thank you. I appreciate that. I accept and receive. That is so cool. Um, this is this is my mission and purpose is to to help connect people and to to give people a, a platform to to share their thoughts. Um, so man, I'm, I'm really honored. Thank you for, for saying that. <laughs> um, so now, Celeste, where could guys go to connect with you? Maybe take you on a mock date or get some advice from you and yeah. talk about some stuff that they're challenging, that yeah. they're challenged with. Uh, I would love to connect with anybody. You can shoot me. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Celeste Moore Image, and you can shoot me a DM. We can just have a little chat. You can book a call just to have, see if we're a good fit for if you want to move further. Uh, there's a link on there, or you can find me at celestemore.com, my website. And I also have a podcast. It's called the Down and Dirty Podcast. Awesome. What's and that about? We talk about. Basically, it's also uncensored. It's talking about anything that relates to dating, bad dates, sex, anything that relationship image, like just stuff that maybe people are uncomfortable in a session talking about and maybe they want to hear. And so we have all sorts of guests on there and we talk about all sorts of things related to relationships and dating. So super cool. And that's yeah. down and dirty and they could find that on Apple yeah. and Google and all those places. The Down and Dirty podcast with Celeste Moore on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google. Yeah. So those are some great tools. Hopefully they can take something from that. Awesome. What is, yeah. all right. So I, I, I lied. I thought we were going to wrap it up. But <laughs> we, we started talking podcasts. I got a few more questions. Do you mind? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So on your podcast, what, what has been one of the most like memorable experiences, like having your podcast show and, and talking to people, like if you look back and you're like, that was super cool. Oh gosh. So I'm a little bit new to this. Okay. So I've had maybe a handful of guests and then I talk about things that people want to learn about. Um, I think, well, I have a future sex couple coming on. So I want to really kind of see their viewpoint on what that looks like. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I learned, I've had a therapist on, a tailor on, like a girl that creates like suits and all sorts of, we talk about penis size. I had a, a <laughs> podcast on foreplay on what women like. So, you know, it's just, I love learning from different people and their perspective and um yeah everyone is a little bit fun and fascinating so awesome the the couple was it let me see i'm pulling them up they're not on there yet oh gosh <laughs> so this is to be um this is probably in a couple weeks we'll be on there is it remy and kevin yes <laughs> i know them <laughs> yes. this is the wonderful they were they were great they're a great interview. You're going to have so much fun. Oh my God. Because she yeah. is so honest. They have really cool accent. They're, she is so honest. You're going to have, yeah. tell them Josh from Uncensored Advice for Men said, Hey, um, I will. Super cool. I love podcasting. <laughs> so, guys, if you want to hear behind the scenes stuff, what women are thinking from penis size to foreplay to, you know, uh, to couples who are coaches and such like that, head on over to the Down and Dirty podcast with Celeste Moore. Have a listen, give her an amazing review and share it with your friends. And uh, guys, if you ever need help, reach out to our guests and ask for it. If you have advice that you'd like to share on Uncensored Advice for Men, head on over to our website, uncensoredadviceformen.com. Fill out a quick form, get you on the show next. Love you guys. Talk to you all on the next episode. Bye-bye.